Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for clicking on this video and giving it a watch. I hope you enjoy it. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about the Sewing for Pleasure show that I went to on Saturday and show you some of the things or all of the things that I picked up at the show. Um, I have a cup of tea because, I don't know if it's because I had a busy weekend probably, or I didn't go to bed early enough last night, but I am tired today. Um, so I need this to help me get through Monday. Um, hope you're all having good Mondays too. So I went to the Sewing, and Ple Sewing for Pleasure show with my auntie. Um, she's also a crafter like me. Uh, we went last year and had a really nice time and we were planning to go this year as well. For those of you who don't know, it's on at the NEC in Birmingham and I'm from not far away. I'm in the Midlands as well. So it's really easy for us to get to, uh, much easier than some of the other shows in London, like the Stitch Festival and the Knitting and Stitching Show, although I have been to the Knitting and Stitching Show before. Um, but I try and go to this one because it's so local and um, I really like it as a show. It's nice and big, nice and spacious. You get a lot of good companies going and there's always lots of nice things to look at. So yeah, we were planning on going. And then a few weeks ago, I had an email from the lovely Sarah from My Handmade Wardrobe asking if I would like to take part in their catwalk. Um, they were doing a catwalk for the Dressmakers Ball, which I went to last year. Um, I've been twice and they were asking if um, we would like to model our ball outfits, which was very exciting. I was looking forward to having an occasion to wear it again because you don't often get the chance to wear a ball gown. Um, so I said yes. And then a bit later on, they asked if we would like to, or if I would like to take part in the My Handmade Wardrobe catwalk as well. Um, and that would be wearing something that Sarah had made for my measurements. So. Again, said yes, happy to help with anything. Um, and sorry, my dog just growled at me. <laughs> She's sitting over there and then she just, yeah, she obviously wonders what I'm doing. Anyway, I might cut that out. Um, so yeah, we went along. What are you doing? <coughs> One sec. Anyway, where was I? So we went to the um, Sewing for Pleasure show at the NEC and um, I had to be there at 12 for the catwalk, the first catwalk at half 12. And I walked into the stage backstage and suddenly saw all these people that some of whom I'd met before, some I hadn't but recognised. So one of the first people I saw was Jess from So What If I Sew? And I wasn't expecting her to be there. I didn't know she was going. So I sort of went, oh, hello. And then um, we'd spoken a few times on Instagram and we chatted right back when uh, Jess first started her channel so it was nice to meet her finally and she was there with Sam uh, from Sequin Girly and they present the So What's New in the Biscuit Tin podcast as well together so it was really nice to meet them and um, see them filming their videos and they did a bit of recording for the podcast I think so I'll have to check out that episode when it comes out um, and then there were lots of other people I'm not going to name everybody because I will forget names. I'm not great with names. I'm good with faces. I know if I've met people before, but I find with the sewing community, there's so many events like the sewing camp and different shows and workshops and pe following people on Instagram. And I know I've met people before or I know their Instagram, but I don't know their name or can't remember where I met them. So, you know, I'm always happy to say hello and chat to people, but I'm not great at remembering names. Um, and then saw Sarah from My Handmade Wardrobe and Freya as well. Um, they had a stand at the show as well. And yeah, so we did the catwalk. I wore, I'll put some video in. My auntie was being my videographer for the day. Um, the first thing I wore was a jersey dress made of a really lovely spotty jersey. And it was very sw uh, swishy and twirly and I really enjoyed wearing it. Um, there was a really great atmosphere on the catwalk as well. Um, the crowd were really supportive and were clapping and seemed really into it. So that was really nice. And then the second thing I wore was a double gauze shirt and it was a very long shirt. It was sort of a caftan type outfit. And it's not something I would ever probably sew to wear myself, but I really enjoyed wearing it and felt very summery and comfortable in it. 
Um, so that was great. And my dog is about to start barking at me again. So one second, it's going to be one of those days I can tell. Anyway, so we did the first catwalk and then we had some lunch and then we had about an hour and a half until the next catwalk. So me and my auntie went off shopping, uh, bumped into Shannon from the sewing warehouse, which is nice. I saw her in Birmingham last year. So we had a little chat and I saw the things she'd bought already. And then, um, yeah, so we, we'd gone as well. <laughs> We've had influences on each other, me and my auntie, because she loves to try any craft. She, she's into everything and I am easily swayed as well. So we did say we didn't really need any more fabric, but we were interested to see what else was on sale. Um, and I had a bit of a shopping list as well for some different tools that I wanted, um, supplies, that kind of thing. So I wasn't too bad. Um, the first thing I bought was this little kit, um, and it's not sewing, it's crochet. So um, this is Ross the Elephant. It's super cute. Um, I can crochet a little bit. I've done granny squares. Um, I can kind of crochet in a straight line, but I've never made anything through crochet. But this comes with the stuffing pattern, the yarn, threads, stitch marker, and a crochet hook. So it has everything you need. And the guy said that there are video tutorials as well, which is great because I'm very much a visual learner. Um, if I can see someone do it, I'll be able to copy it usually. Um, I'm not great with written instructions for things like crochet. So um, I thought that'd be nice. And it was only 4 99 They had a lot of different kits. They had loads of these little animals, but I like the elephant, elephant the best. Um, there were some bigger ones as well. Um, yeah, so I picked them him up and, you know, it'd be a nice thing to do if I can take it traveling or on the train or when I'm watching TV and that kind of thing. Um, so that was the first thing I bought. The next thing I picked up, um, this probably won't be in order. I'll try and follow some kind of logic. Um, the second thing I got was free and it's a Gutemann thread chart. So it's like a booklet that has all the different thread colors in for Gutemann, which is the thread I tend to use. Um, and it means when you're at home, you can compare the different colors and you know what shade you need and you don't have to go down to the fabric shop and you know, be comparing threads with the fabric. You can just pick one and maybe order it online. So that'll be really useful. Um, I got one for cotton and one for polyester, but I tend to only use polyester thread anyway. So that'll come in handy. The next thing I got was uh, from Sew Girl. So uh, she, I believe, designs a lot of her own patterns and they're all really nice. She always has lots of lovely samples on her stand. And I spotted, she had some bag samples made up because she has this pattern, um, which is very similar to a bag that everybody has nowadays. I have lots. Um, I think it was first designed by Uniqlo and now lots of shops are selling them. I have four in different colors and I love it. It's just such a useful bag for traveling and going around airports. I always keep my passport and my phone in that bag and then wear my backpack. So I saw the pattern and she'd made it up in this fabric um, and it just looked really cool. Um, and she hand prints this fabric and I just really liked it. And I like blue, I wear blue all the time. So she swayed me and I asked if she did kits and she doesn't do a full kit, but she sells all the different elements. So I bought that fabric and the pattern and I'm looking forward to making that. Um, then, I went to Little Legs Fabric. Um, I bought something from them last year. They sold a really lovely lemon print jersey, which I was sort of umming and ahhing about. And then I decided to just go for it. And I made that for So Yellow for Endo last year. Um, and they always have such beautiful jersey prints. Um, and I was trying not to buy any more jersey this year because I don't need any. Um, and then, I saw this fabric, which I'd missed out on earlier this year. They sold it at first for fabrics and I really liked it, but I was too late and missed it. And then I saw it at Little Eggs and I had to have it. I was walking around holding the bolt, like no one else can have this. Um, and it's this sweatshirting. So it's a navy sweatshirting with these purple lilac 
flowers on and little uh, orange dots in the middle. And I, I'm not sure, you know, I think it's quite um, my style. I quite like big graphic prints and kind of cute, but not too ditzy. And something about it when I first saw it just really, you know, really called to me. So I decided to get some of that. Now, my first plan for this fabric when I saw it online and missed out on it was to make a Sirocco jumpsuit by Deer and Doe, which I've made before. I made one in a really lovely Modal French Terry um, and it's super comfy and I really love the shape of it. But when I made it, I made short sleeves, well, kind of elbow length sleeves, but the fabric is quite warm. So the rest of me is warm when I wear it, but my arms are cold and then it kind of doesn't feel right to wear a cardigan over it. So my first thought was to make one in this fabric, but I'm just, I'm not entirely sure if it has enough stretch. I mean, it's not bad. It's got, well, it's got a bit of stretch, you know, for a sweatshirting. Um, but I'm not sure because you put the Sirocco on from the bottom and have to pull the bodice over your shoulders. I'm not sure how well it will work in this fabric. Um, but I would make it long sleeves if I did. And then I thought maybe I could kind of cheat the Sirocco and make it a top and bottom separately and add on like a waistband and for on both the top and the bottom so I can wear them separately or together. Um, I don't think that would be too difficult. Or I might just make any sweatshirt pattern and another joggers pattern. Um, so I'm not sure at the moment. I think if I made it in separates, I would wear the jumper quite often. Um, and I'd probably make it cropped because most of the things I wear are high-waisted or come in at the waist. So I'd maybe make a cropped jumper and joggers. Um, but let me know what you think. Um, if you've made the Sirocco and what fabric you use, let me know. I, it's really nice and I'd love to make another one because it's nice to just get dressed in a jumpsuit and not have to think about coordinating tops and bottoms. So we will see what I end up doing with that. Maybe I probably won't do anything until the autumn maybe, but working from home, it would be a really nice thing to have to lounge around in um, and work hard, obviously I don't lounge. Um, and then while I was at Little Legs Fabric, they had some other things that I was after as well. So to go with this, bag fabric they had some webbing um, like strap material so I thought this was a really good match um, it's like a blue and green and white webbing but I think it matches this quite nicely I'll hold it that way so that's the strapping I'm going to use for the bag and that's one and a half meters and then they also had um, one of the rings. I wasn't entirely sure what rings I needed. It did say on the pattern, but the way it was worded, I couldn't really tell if I need two or one. So I got the slider in like a gunmetal grey. Um, but I think I might need another ring as well. It says you need one 25 millimeter rectangle ring and slider. So is that one thing or is that two things? Is that one ring and one slider or one ring and slider? I don't really know if, I mean, looking at the picture, there are two things. There's like a ring here and a slider here. So I guess I've just answered my own question, but I'm sure I can get something to match this on eBay or somewhere really easily. Um, and then what else did I get? I also bought some prim stretch needles these are what I tend to use when I'm making anything in Jersey and I have to do hems. Um, I went through a phase a while ago of doing twin needling, top stitching, but then I can't be bothered anymore. Um, you have to set up the machine with two spools and I just find it a faff. So I just zigzag everything now um, and I needed some more of those needles. So that was from Little Legs Fabrics. What else? Then I went to Becky's sewing studio and I'd heard of Becky because I think she did an advent calendar box at Christmas and Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl had one and it looked really good. It looked like it included lots of really nice things. So maybe next Christmas I'll get one of those. And Becky was wearing a gorgeous dress in this really graphic geometric 
bold print and I loved it and she said she'd sold out that morning so um, didn't manage to get any of that but she had loads of lovely fabrics and stickers and prints and little gift type things for sewists and I decided to pick up a sticker which says love to sew um, I just thought it was really pretty and I'm going to put it on the side of my sewing machine so that was nice and then um, the last thing I bought was from a quilting shop I don't know what their name was um, it was something bear it had bear in the name because when I bought my stuff he asked me to vote in their um, they had a poll to choose a new logo and it definitely had a bear in it um, so if I can find it, I'll write it down below. Um, but I just picked up a couple of things that I needed for quilting. Um, I needed a new rotary cutter blade and I have an Ulfa rotary cutter, but someone was talking about these blades when I was waiting and she said they were really sharp and lasted a long time. They're titanium. You can see the price over the name. Um, they're titanium blades and she said they lasted a really long time and he said that um, they would go with any rotary cutter, so I picked those up. Um, I don't quilt a huge amount, so I don't get through blades that often, but I've been making like the baby quilt and I might have another baby quilt coming up soon for another friend. So I picked those up. Um, there's just one in there. Um, and then I got a quilting ruler. It's quite long. It's 18 inches long. Uh, because my other one is a bit short, it's only about eight inches long. So when I was cutting out the squares, it wasn't quite long enough to do the whole thing in one go. So I thought I would pick up a another ruler and that's useful for cutting strips, bias binding, um, quilt squares, anything. So that was really useful and that was eight pounds. So that was all I bought at the show. Not too bad. And I did spend some money I'd been saving. So. I don't feel like I went out of control or anything. I could have easily bought so much more. I was on the Lady McElroy stand and I was fawning over all their fabrics, but I have so much fabric in my stash that I really want to sew that I just don't want to buy endless amounts of fabric and not end up using them for another three years. I've still got fabrics I bought at the last Sewing for Pleasure show last year that I haven't used yet. so. I'm quite happy with what I got and I'm glad I managed to tick off some things off my shopping list. Um, so that was all the shopping I did and then I went back to the catwalk at half three to do the dressmaker's ball catwalk um, and that felt really nice. Everyone put on their glam dresses and I was reminded of all the beautiful things people made um, and we all had a great time walking along the catwalk and then we each stood up and spoke a bit about what patterns we used and how we made them and the crowd were again really nice and lively and supportive and then after that it only lasted about five minutes ten minutes and it was like oh you know all that and now I've got to get changed again um, I think we were tempted to stay in our dresses for the rest of the day but that might have looked a bit silly um, so yeah in all I had a wonderful time I had a really really nice time looking at all the fabrics and shopping in person and seeing some companies that I don't see very often and seeing uh, some nice people. I bumped into Ruth from, I think she's Seems Dressed Ruth on YouTube. Uh, I enjoy watching her videos. So we had a little chat about YouTube and sewing and lots of other things. And then, yeah, we headed home and I went to my niece's ninth birthday party. So a long day. Um, I feel like I accomplished a lot and had a really nice time and reminds me why I love sewing and the sewing community and crafting and all sorts of things like that. So let me know down below if you like going to these sewing shows and um, which one's your favourite. Have you been to the Sewing for Pleasure show or any others in the UK? Um, I know lots of people are heading to the Stitch Festival next weekend. I can't go because I'm on holiday, but that's probably a good thing. Um, I don't need to be spending any more money. So yeah, and I keep forgetting to say, but if you enjoy this video, give it a like. Uh, if you'd like to see more of my videos coming up, then subscribe. Um, you don't have to opt into emails or anything like that. You can just subscribe and it gives me a little happy feeling when I see more people subscribing. So please do. And I will see you hopefully soon for the next one. Have a good day. Bye guys.